I'm here at the House of Commons in London to attend a political summit. It's got a long theme, but I can remember gender equality in political governance. And I said to myself, do they know that they can actually use sports to achieve that objective? So I'm here to find a way to put sports into the conversation. So walk with me. Let's go in there and find out what this summit is all about. Don't get it twisted. These are not members of the UK House of Parliament. They are participants in the ninth edition of the London Political Summit. It has a rich attendance of policymakers, health and safety experts, members of Nigeria's House of Representatives, the First Lady of Sierra Leone, and government officials from Zambia and the United Kingdom. Why is gender equality an important discussion in political governance? Governments that fail to address social economic disparities risk undermining their own stability. In Sierra Leone, we have made some efforts that are broad-based, including protection, liberation and empowerment. My Hands Off Our Girls campaign targeted sexual and gender-based violence, child marriage, teenage pregnancy, menstrual hygiene, child trafficking, HIV and AIDS, fistula, and I advocated for systemic policies and laws reform so that decision-making can be inclusive and sustainable. This helped us understand the struggles, challenges, and aspiration of the marginalized groups of our population and empower us to shape policies that will address their needs and aspiration, which is why we listen to them and develop a national plan that was their own. Furthermore, long-term thinking and future of benefit was central, which aim at ensuring Sierra Leoneans become competitive and useful in this technological and innovative world and the best way of pursuing that was investing in education. Education is now the single highest taker of resources from our national budget. And by the First Lady, if you would oh, be... Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I might have given a longer speech if I'd have known. <laughs> Actually, the part of my job that I love the most is that I also have responsibility in the Department for Health and Social Care for international health. So uh, World Health Organization, I'll be going to the G20 um, Health Ministers Summit in Rio at the end of this month. Uh, we are uh, looking at uh, how we can help colleagues in different parts of the world with the capacity and the expertise that the National Health Service in the UK has, that the UK Health Security Agency has, in assisting with a whole range of issues from HIV right the way through to MPOX and uh, some of the other global health challenges. And I think it's really important that we do recognise that those health inequalities that brought me into politics here in the UK matter not just on a national scale, they matter on an international scale too. Inequality is inequality wherever it exists. And if there is a life expectancy gap between two people living in two very different parts of Manchester, which there are, those are wrong and it is my job and our job collectively as politicians to try and address those inequalities. Those views from the First Lady of Sierra Leone and the UK Member of Parliament set the tone for me to get on with my mission. So I pulled two gentlemen aside to extend the conversation. My name's John Hannett, Lord John Hannett. I'm from Liverpool, but of course I'm now a peer in the House of Lords. That's awesome. on the House of Lords. I see you guys are pushing a lot of conversations around tackling inequality and a lot of these conversations that we're having today are getting people involved 
where does sport sit in all of this strategic collaboration? In sport? Yeah. Well, I think sport's very important. First of all, sport is a great issue for individuals in terms of the fitness. But in terms of business, there are many big global players now in sport. Particularly, I think, of football, where you've got these global owners. So sport's important because it's a big contributor to the economy and it, it plays an important role in society generally. Can we actually use it to tackle inequality? I think wherever you are, whether it's sport or any walk of life, you have to have an ambition to tackle poverty. Many people who go to football, as an example, or other sports come from very traditional working class areas. And it's an expensive hobby to be involved in sports. So where inequality exists, you've seen it in some of the, some of the football uh, clubs themselves where there's been issues of equality has arisen. So you can, yeah, and I think it's a, a massive gathering of people who participate in sports and therefore, whilst it's a business, it should be a part of people's participation that they raise equality issues. If people are being treated unfairly in sports or any other walk of life, then it should be challenged. My name is Sir Jonathan Lukubri. I'm the president of the Joint Council Worldwide. Awesome. So, what's the major objective of this meeting? The purpose of this gathering was to honor people who have contributed in their own different careers and human endeavors to promoting a culture of growth, a culture of unity, a culture of justice and equality among people and citizens across the world. And I heard you talked about the inequalities and the neglect of the Niger Delta region back home in Nigeria. But let's look away from what government can do. In empowering the young people, do you think we can in any way use sports to address this issue of inequality? Absolutely. You know, sport has a way of equalizing people. Sports also have a way of projecting even the most neglected people to anywhere in the world globally. So using sport as a means of lifting people and liberating young people especially of the Niger Delta is, is an important conversation that needs to be advanced. Back in the room, the summit is done, but I'm not done. My name is Fatima Marebio, I'm the first lady of Sierra Leone. Fantastic. I heard you say a beautiful thing about gender equality, particularly in Africa's governance. But when you take a look at the situation, what role can sports play in this? Uh, to be honest with you, sport is a unifier. Um, uh, I'm a very big fan of football and sport is a unifier. Sport brings people together. It's one of the... the, the um, Thing that you don't have to think about the, someone's political background, you don't think about someone's race, you don't think about at that moment when you're there, you are each other's brother's skipper, you look out for each other, you support one another, you entertain people, and the people who are there forget about who they are. They all focus on this joyful thing that they're saying. So I think it's a, it's one of the most beautiful way to bring people together. It's one of the most beautiful way to unify people. When I'm invited to this um, sports program. I support them, I attend their programs, and especially when it involves women, I found a way to support them financially so that they grow and they continue to participate in society. Is Africa doing well with gender equality? Uh, not really, but I'll speak for my country because my president has done fantastically well. My husband has changed the narrative. My husband has given women space, including myself. This is the first time a first lady has been a general representation of a nation. And uh, we have 30% quota for all elected and uh, appointed positions in our country today. For the first time in the history of our country today, a woman can buy a land and have their name on that document. For the first time in the history of Sierra Leone, a woman can actually go to the bank and take a loan on their name. For the first time in the history of Sierra Leone, if you, if you stay with a man for six years and the man decides to leave you for another, whatever you have at that time, you share 50-50. For the first time in the history of Sierra Leone, if you lose a partner and the family want to come and take over the house, it is impossible. The woman stays in that house until she dies or the man stays in that house until he dies. So our president has changed so much for us and has given us so much. I can say to you, we have 
of women in our cabinets today. We have 30% of women in our parliaments today. Every parastatus, um, ambassadors, deputy ambassadors, we're talking about almost 38% of them are female. So our president is doing fantastically well. My advice to all African presidents is to emulate what Sierra Leone is doing and change the narrative for Africa. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Insightful conversation at this London political summit. I love the fact that Africa was in the conversation and they've seen the need for gender equality issues to be addressed. And you listen to the guys I spoke to, I found a way to put sports into the conversation because sports is an enabler, sports is a unifier, sports has got the power to transform lives and sports can be used as a tool for national unity and social cohesion sports is life that's it